Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Phillips and welcome to this week's webisode. You know, every week I bring in a different business to help share tips and advice within their profession and hopefully you find it interesting and helpful. Today I have Jim Enright and Jim, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeff. So glad to be here. Yep. And why don't you explain to the viewers a little bit about yourself? Okay, great. Well, as Jeff said, my name is Jim Enright. I am a mortgage lender with Corporate Investors Mortgage Group in Chapel Hill. So what I do is I lend money for people who are buying or refinancing. Okay. So why don't you explain to the, the, the viewers and myself, what is okay. the difference between a broker and a banker? Okay. Well, actually, there are three mortgage uh, banker mortgage lending models that are important to know. So the first is your retail bank. This is the bank you're going to see right out there on the corner, you know, with the big sign. Now, oftentimes people think that's a really great place to go because it's a big name and it's a big bank and they may have their checking and savings there. And there can be some opportunities. But the difference is, is that bank only has one set of lenders rates that they use. The second aspect to be aware of is that once the loan officer takes the application in there, Jeff, it could be processed in another state, it could be underwritten in yet another state, and it could be closed in yet another state. So often there is really very little process control. But the second type is a mortgage broker. A mortgage broker has the benefit of representing many different lenders, so there is a greater rate and competitiveness there. They also process the loans locally, typically right in their office, so there's a little bit more control there. The, what they don't do, though, is that they don't approve loans and send closing documents to the closing table. So what that means is that the investor who's underwriting the loan is going to underwrite it, going to uh, and send closing documents out. So there can be a loss of control there that could be really important, particularly on touchy situations or on purchases. And Jeff, the third model that I think is pretty darn good is a correspondent mortgage banker. And that is a hybrid model, and I say it's the best of both worlds. And what a correspondent mortgage banker does is they lend their own money. So not only does a correspondent represent many national banks, and frequently it's the same big banks that are on the corners, but they process the loans in-house, they approve the loans in-house, and they send the closing documents and the check to closing right locally from their office. So for instance, in our case, that's Chapel Hill or Raleigh. But it could, you know, depends on where the correspondent banker is from. So the important thing for a borrower is control in the process. The other aspect that is important for the borrower, though, Jeff, is that because our investors are only sending a uh, send your new mortgage payment here letter to their customers, they always give us the absolute lowest interest rate. So it's, there's a competitive van advantage there also. So that's the three uh, mortgage banking models that it's important for consumers to be aware of. Okay, great. Well, um, if, if a consumer is looking to purchase a home or even uh, refinance, refinance, where should they start the process? Um, it's really important to start really in the planning and in the thought process. So there are a lot of moving pieces to a mortgage process actually during the assembly line process, but outside with the consumer it really begins with understanding where they are right now in their life and where they will be in the next five to seven years. So for instance, Jeff, sometimes uh, buying a house and getting into it with the minimum down payment is important. Other times, if there is, for instance, a lot of debt, for instance, student loans, I see a lot of student loan debt, you know, sometimes the goal is to really pay that off faster. And on the other side, you know, if somebody may have children that are going to college in the next, you know, five years, eight years, ten years, and they want to save up and pay as much cash for it. So understanding this, understanding, you know, am I going to be retiring in the next 15 years and want to time the payoff? All these are the various little pieces to the puzzle. And once those are identified, it's much easier then to then pick out and decide upon the program, the amortization, down payment, and all those other options. Oh, okay. So planning is where it begins. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's very important. Yeah. So um, let's say if a, um, a borrower um, is looking to, to purchase or refinance, mm -hmm. what, what do they need to know about interest rates or closing costs? Well, 
First of all, they can be very confusing, even for lenders, I'll have to say. And for the poor consumer who's out looking on the internet, looking at interest rates, and then calling around, it can be even more, con more confusing. So what I would say to that is uh, the lowest interest rate isn't necessarily the least expensive uh, rate for you. So for example, the lowest rate is going to have the highest closing cost. Highest closing costs are your basic lender closing cost plus 1% of the loan amount or some percentage of the loan amount. Uh, on a, depending on the loan size, that could be anywhere from four to six or eight thousand dollars. The next option is a low closing cost option, Jeff, and that is a loan with no origination fee. That might be an eighth of a percent higher. The third option, though, is what I call a no closing cost loan. Now, depending upon the loan size, it could be anywhere from a quarter to a half percent higher than the lower interest rate. Now, you might say, why in the world would I take a higher interest rate? Because it's totally counterintuitive to anything that you would uh, ever do. But the reason is, is because if you look at the payment savings versus the investment and closing costs and consider amortizations, oftentimes the break-even time could be seven years, even up to 12 years to get the lowest closing cost, uh, to get the lowest rate. Now, if there is a buyer or a builder or somebody else that's paying closing costs, I always recommend going for the lowest interest rate. But if a borrower is paying them themselves, we always want to look at the other options. Great. Well, great. Well, thank you very much, Jim, and I appreciate you coming in today. If, if you all out there are interested in uh, learning more about Jim and his company, you know, I will put the website at the end of this video. But before that, I just want to just give Jim a quick testimonial. As he knows, he, we recently financed our home. It was a fantastic transaction. I've done it two times before, and this was definitely the smoothest uh, uh, refinance that we had done to date. And if you want uh, good service and a job done right, uh, contact Jim, Jim Enright. Now, if you, if, if, if you have found that this uh, video was valuable to you and it's your first time hanging out with us, I'd love to have you subscribe to InFocusStudios.com or at InFocusStudios.com or here on the InFocus Studios YouTube channel. And feel free to leave any of your comments below this video as well. All right, thanks again and see you next time.